同时认识一些其他呃使用 large format 的人，啊、呃，我从呃这些 workshop 里面也学了不少东西。后来呃我就介绍佩尔到美雅摄影沙龙里面，后来他也到我们这边的沙龙，在二零零七年的时候。他在这边也有个 workshop 在这边，啊，我跟他谈了一下，他就说他希望在这边以后他有空的话，我我在这边也可以有个 workshop， 我们就在啊的 L A 里面就找个地方有个 workshop， 啊，大家可以跟他学一学，啊，那另外他每一年啊在那个加沙区那边也有个 workshop， 那平常是一月，啊，大概最近已经啊那个改到二月的时候。你不一定要使用 large format 的人啊，就是我们平常使用 digital f o r t 呃 camera 的人也可以去啊。那到时候他有这个 workshop 的时候，我们会在那个网站里面啊贴出来，大家可以一一起去参加啊。那我们就请佩尔开始啊那个演讲。OK， I kind of try to understand a little bit. I w o u l say that. I don't only shoot large format, but I only shoot film. I I do have a point and shoot digital camera, and I think it's very very complicated. I, I, it feels much much easier. To live. Anyway, a young man over there asked me before, "What is the best camera?" And I said, "Well, it depends what you're going to do. Now, it's just like you're going to build a house. You get a need a big construction hammer. You shoot me, you need a small hammer. So the same thing with cameras. Like this camera can do one thing." And this camera can do another thing. Digital camera can do one more, and a regular 35 can do something else. So it all depends what you're going to do. And if you're if you're uh, if you a photographer, a lot of times you have to you need to know the different tools. Of course, you can you can concentrate on one size and say that's all I'm going to do, and that's fine. Yeah, I just I just get inspired by many different things, so I try to do. <coughs> A lot of different things. Anyway, when you look at this camera here, you see a lot of controls, and it looks very complex, but it's not. All it is is a box with a, with a lens in the front and the film holder in the back, and then all these controls here will allow you to move things. So you can either you can stretch the image, or you can compress it, or you can hold depth of field, or you can you can change the look of it. That's all it does. Uh, when you're using a regular camera. Everything is locked in. The, the focal plane and everything is parallel. Here, it doesn't have to be parallel. You can switch it around. And there are times like I'm sure all of you have tried to photograph a building, looking up, and all you do is get converging lines. And you say, well, in Photoshop, I can stretch it out. Well, you can, but Photoshop will interpolate it and throw information in between. So you're ending up with something that's probably not as good as you could if you had a Tilt, shift, lens, or a view camera, and this camera will allow the lens to go up or down. Or, so if you're shooting up, you can you can maintain verticals or do anything you want. It's totally up to you. So in, ter in terms of a creative tool, I I think this is a fantastic thing because it's only limited by, by the way you think. When you're looking at a subject matter, you can make it look any way you want. So it's you you don't have to take what the camera gives you. That's to me. That's a danger of, of an automated camera. You you you, you see you see something that's great, and you take a shot of it, and then it looks colorful. It's sharp. It's focused. And then you say, "Great, I'll go into it. Take another one." Maybe what you should do is is look at it and say, "Well, what if what if I changed it? What if I walked over two feet, or went down a little bit, or if I tried something else?" Uh, automated cameras tend to make you not do that. If you had a a, a camera that has to make you, that have to make you think, then you'll probably slow down. And this thing about think more, shoot less is is just a you know, it just comes out of that. It's it's just a slow down anyway. Anyway, what I'd like to do today, I brought some prints that were taken with different kinds of cameras, some eight by ten, some four by five, some five by seven, and I think I got one thirty five too, and they're all black and white. I, 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 I used to shoot commercial color. I used to shoot cars, naked women, cosmetics, you name it, in color. It's black and white is what I like to do. So that's why I only want black and white. Anyway, I'll just start here. Uh, and uh, feel free to stop me anytime. 
and ask questions. You know, or you can come up and look and, and do different things. And also, I have another box with some other types of prints here. I'll show you because they're, di they're different. All these prints here are silver prints. And by the way, none of these prints are made on a on a uh, on an Epson printer. They're all made regular darkroom printing using regular photo paper, developer stock fix, and so forth. Anyway, this is from photo printing. This on. I'm just going to go through them quickly. If you want to see more, what's yeah. this one? Missile. Missile. Oh, missile. Yeah, missile. I, uh, <laughs> it's actually. It's a model or? Well, it's, a it's actually a full size markup. And um, actually, I took it home from the, the place where they're making it. I had it in the back seat, but it was before 9 before 11. So <laughs> I don't think you could make it today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting stopped on the freeway with that thing wouldn't be good. Uh, another thing, I used to shoot a lot of airplanes, a lot of aircraft. And this is actually. A, Looking down on, a, on an airplane wing from an F5E fighter jet. What camera did you use? This then? is a 4x5 and this is a tri X film. Where now, did you stand? How do you stand? I was way up on a forklift. Looking oh. straight down. Oh. And it uh, took a long time to do this. Maybe it took six hours. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, the first thing they tell you is you can't get in over the plane. Mm -hmm. Then they find out how slow I work. After about three hours, yeah, where do you want to go? I want to go above the plane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that for commercial work or? Yeah, I did shoot a lot of stuff for Northrop Grumman for the annual reports. Oh, okay. So, so I had this. Okay. This is another shot of a, actually it's now known as F-18. At this time it was YF-17A. And instead of photographing the whole plane, I wanted to give the feeling that this plane is capable of stalling and then go straight up, like 10 miles. So I want to give a soaring kind of feel. Instead of photographing the airplane the way you usually see it, an airplane, I'm no more interested in what it does and what, what it feels like. Uh, oh, this is just an aluminum profile. I mean, you, you don't have to go to exotic places to shoot photographs. You can find things in your own backyard. Or This is just stuff from, uh, from the hardware store. An aluminum <coughs> profile. Just sitting there with one light on it. Uh, the next piece here is actually a very small piece of aluminum. And I got it and I could see all these grooves in it. And there was one light in the room, just one bare bulb. And uh, when I looked at it in a certain way, this is what it looked like. It's flat. How big and is this one? It's about this big. What a kind of lens. Oh, this is photographed with 8 by 10 The way I photographed this, I, because of magnification, I shot it on 8 by 10 And it's magnified maybe five times. I took a Nikon lens from the Nikon camera and I hot glued it onto a new camera. And uh, it, it, it was a very strong exposure, but it covered it because of the magnification. If you, if you look at, a, at a, a lens side view, the way the light goes through, it creates like a cone, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If, if, if it was not magnified, it wouldn't cover. But the further away you get, the bigger the cone gets, so it could cover about 10. It's not from Alabama Hills. This is 5 by 7, I believe. Where is this place? After Joshua Tree? Pardon? Is this Joshua Tree National Park? No, this is uh, Alabama Hills. Oh, I'll come here with me. This is Joshua Tree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Some of these I don't have information on that. Oh, here's another one. Oh, here's another one. This one I was saying. Sometimes I find junk in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. That's a nice job. Huh? That's a nice job. Yeah, what's that? That's actually a dead flower from an agave. And I had a piece of uh, watercolor paper and a Chinese paint brush and I painted in the back of it. Oh. So, <laughs> anything goes. No, no, no rules. <laughs> rules are made to be broken. <laughs> if people say that you can't do this, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an old friend of ours, 95 year old lady. I took that picture. Oh, she does look like 65. Look like Annette. <laughs> <laughs>